Well, what I try to do primarily is to, and most of the other groups there operate in the same way, uh, is to align or to look through the lens of our mission as a congregation. And so certainly extreme poverty, uh, protecting the earth, and with the emphasis on simplicity from our last chapter, uh, we also, it also aligns very well with the whole movement that's emerging at the UN, more and more people conscious about what is development meant to look like as we move forward. That it's not only economic, it has to do with people's rights, respect for the earth, First of all, making sure that no one is starving, no one is hungry, and that they all connect. There's, a, I think, a growing consciousness that they all connect, and that we're at a crisis uh, time in human history, really. I mean, the earth is in peril. We have people that are starving to death. And we also, there's also the, a, a growing awareness of that and that it connects and that we can't solve one issue separately from the other. So we can't only talk about development in terms of economic terms. We have to talk in terms of the human effect, the effect on the earth, so that we find a way to live together uh, safely and in a way that protects the whole earth community. Uh, in Rio 20, which was a conference specifically on development last year, term there is uh, learning to live well so that other people can live, and not just people, all the earth community. The other real shift in attitude that is happening all over is that we are earth, we're not separate. So what we do to the earth affects us, and what happens on the earth also, if it's a two-way, well, it's more than a two-way, it's a multi-way. So um, I, I think there is a growing awareness of that. And it's for, it requires that shift in attitude to address the issues before us. So for me, it's primarily, if you want to focus it down into committee work, say, it would be uh, climate change and extreme poverty. I'm involved with um, also in the issues of um, mining and kind of land rights the new committee or the new term that's emerging more is land grabbing the way people lose their land either because uh, it's over farmed uh, companies lease it for a number of years get all the minerals out of it and then leave no um although there there is a formula I tell you, or a template of a day would include well, first of all, you're probably checking emails and seeing what happened and that you need to respond to. Um, I work, I have a small um, cubicle <laughs> in an office near the UN, and it's shared by the uh, International Presentation Sisters, their, their confederation, and Unanima, and, well, we're, and the Congregation of Notre Dame. So we're the, we're the three entities there. Uh, so my first thing would be when I when I work in the office, which is probably three days a week. Sometimes I can work from home. Um, to check emails, to see what's going on over at the UN. There's a daily briefing that's a journal, and what you want to attend. Ideally, I do that the night before. But uh, are there events at the UN? Are there briefings? Are there commissions that you want to be at? Some of which are open, not all. And um, and then the NGO groups have committees. And usually, um, in the course of a week, I'd be going to at least two or, two, or three, two, two or three meetings. And then there's all the other kinds of things that come up that are what we call side events, or somebody, some NGO is offering something very good, say, on, um, oh, on land rights or on, uh, on nuclear issues. And, Often enough, they're sponsored too by a nation. Those kind of briefing events, if they can get one of the missions to sponsor it, that's a big help, and it means you'll have more attendance. 